Hello and welcome to the Pro Yaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 31. Base stars are in third! I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Hey, you know, I opened the newspaper this morning and look here! The base stars are in third place! Now, having finished in last place the last five years in a row, that's not necessarily out of the question that that's where they'll be this year as only a couple of games still separate them from Yakult in last. However, since the All-Star break, Yokohama has really been playing well. And another fun fact, since league play resumed after interleague play, Yokohama is actually ranked second behind only the Giants. The Giants are 15 and 10 since regular league play has resumed, compared to 14 and 12 for Yokohama, a 538 winning percentage. Nonetheless, having been four outs away from third place on Thursday and just not quite getting there, the base stars have finally made it. They have entered A class and really do have a chance, shall I say it? of getting to the postseason. Oh, and let me tell you, even though it was known that Chunichi had already lost going into yesterday's game, things were not at all looking good for Yokohama. In fact, Nomi had a perfect game going through five innings against the Bay Stars before they finally managed to break through and score three runs in the sixth inning. Now, when Christopher writes up his replay of yesterday's game, I'm sure that he will talk a great deal about how the Bay Stars did absolutely nothing and were completely worthless throughout the game. And, you know, with Brandon's pitching, it is amazing that Hanshin did not score more. I kind of will have to agree with him that this loss for Hanshin was all Hanshin's fault because Brandon put runners on base almost every inning he pitched. He loaded the bases with nobody out in the third and the only run he gave up was a two-out single by Nomi, Hanshin's pitcher. He is the only batter on Hanshin who was able to come through in the clutch when they were given so many opportunities. Now, Christopher was disparaging Yokohama's Fuji pitcher the day before, and, you know, I like Christopher. I find his writing to be extremely entertaining and at the same time, extremely frustrating. If you haven't read his blog, um, it kind of helps if you are a Hanshin fan, as he is just, his blood runs yellow. Hanshin yellow. Let's just put it that way. And it's just that he kind of has this impression that no other team is deserving of being on the same field as the Hanshin Tigers. And I kind of have a problem with that. It kind of reminds me of a red, white, and blue blooded American Republican. No amount of facts can dissuade them from what they view as reality. Nonetheless, I have been a bit negligent with keeping my blog up to date. That is, uh, the two series before the All-Star break. I've really been caught up with work and haven't had enough time or energy maybe to keep uh, writing in my blog. Also, I'm not exactly sure that writing up each game is necessarily helpful to anyone anyway. These uh, weekly reports though, I do plan on continuing through the end of the year and We'll see how it goes with next year. Anyway, what happened was Yokohama lost 2-3 to, to the Hanshin Tigers 
and then swept your cult going into the All-Star break that started July 18th. After the All-Star break, we split the first series with Chunichi, one game apiece, to remain one and a half games behind them. As mentioned before, we were just four outs away from defeating them and taking third place last Thursday. After that, we headed down to Koshien, where we have now taken the first two games against Hanshin. At the same time, the Chunichi Dragons have lost two in a row to the Yomiuri Giants, and Yokohama takes over third place, as mentioned before, for the first time since 2007. Before that, in 2005, Yokohama did manage to be in third place soon after the All-Star break, and that is where they remained at the end of the season. That's the highest they've ranked over the past, gee, forever. More than not, however, looking back to the last time Yokohama won a championship, that was 1998, um, they have generally done worse after the All-Star break than they have leading up to it. Now, there have been a few exceptions. Um, like I remember several years ago, Yokohama really beat up on Hanshin in the last half. Well, maybe it was just the last series of the season. But, you know, it left the Bay Stars fans feeling confident going into the next season how well they performed there even though they finished in last. Now, of course, there are some issues still, despite being in third place. For one thing, Yokohama is still 10 games under 500. Now, I really don't want to go on to the Japan Series having finished the season 10 games under 500, or just basically under 500 in general. That just doesn't seem right to me. Yet, the playoff system, as it is set up, may allow that to happen. Also, while Yokohama may be 7-6 and six against Hanshin, a winning record, they are 2-9 and nine against the Giants. That doesn't bode well, considering that the Giants are still favored for taking first place in the Central League. Also, Yokohama has given up 30 more runs than they have scored so far this season. Thus, they're a bit under 500. However, if you look at the run differential for the other three teams below the Bay Stars, you'll find that their differential of runs scored versus runs allowed are actually worse than Yokohama. I find that hard to believe, but there it is. And yet, Yokohama's pitching with a 4.45 ERA is the absolute worst in the Central League and, at a quick glance, worse, well, well worse than any team in the Pacific League. And now it's time for the pocket calendar. Tomorrow, July 29th, we'll see the release of the latest Japan Baseball Weekly podcast with Jim and John. It looks like they had an interview with Jose Fernandez of, as John put it, Nippon Professional Baseball. Why Nippon Professional Baseball in general? Well, because he's been with so many teams now that it's kind of hard to say just which team he's playing for. Although, this time around, it's Oryx. Uh, they also plan on talking about Iguchi's 2000th hit between the Majors and Pro Yaku, as well as Makun's amazing record and the All-Star finale. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaku Report. Thank you for joining me. Hope to see you next week. Take care.